Virilette couldn't tear her eyes away from the human male student striding confidently down the corridor. His muscular frame, upright posture, and the faint sheen of sweat glistening on his exposed skin sent tingles down her sinuous tail. She had pored over every scrap of data about these fascinating bipedal primates, but nothing compared to observing them in the flesh. Their very existence defied reason, surviving and prospering on a hellish death world teeming with millions of hostile life forms. Yet humans didn't just endure. They dominated through an intriguing combination of ingenuity, determination, and sheer brutality when required. Freelex shivered with anticipation at the thought of unraveling their mysteries firsthand at the prestigious Kareth Academy. Zack cursed under his breath as he hurried through the gleaming metal corridors of the Orbital Academy. He hated being late, but getting used to the lower gravity was still a daily struggle. At least the view from the massive observation windows made the commute more bearable. The brilliant azure curves of the gas giant Kareth hung mesmerizingly in the inky vastness. Zack had lucked into one of the first human exchange student slots at the exclusive academy after the Confederacy's first official contact with humanity. He still remembered the shock and awe that rippled through the galaxy at the existence of their gritty, relentless species. Conquering a death world saturated with millions of hellish life forms was one thing, but their stubborn refusal to share any biological data had driven xenologists mad with frustrated curiosity for decades. When they'd finally reached out, it was with the cavalier arrogance of demigods, providing exhaustive records on their physiology, history, and technology in a single data dump without preamble. Some odd scientists theorized it was a power move to intimidate the younger races. Others pointed to humanity's open defiance of their notoriously strict reproduction policies as a harbinger of chaos. Zack didn't care either way, he just wanted to drink from the intoxicating font of human knowledge firsthand. He rounded the corner at a jog, nearly colliding with a shimmering, serpentine alien that seemed frozen in place, staring at him with unblinking emerald eyes. Zack's pulse quickened as he took in the exquisite, almost draconian features, scales shimmering like molten metal, a sleek, sinuous body tapering into a wicked spiked tail, and a mane of quivering tendrils framing a regal visage. S sorry Zack stammered, flushing at his clumsiness. Didn't see you there. The alien's tongue flicked out, tasting the air between them. No need for apology, she purred in a melodious trill. I was uh, admiring the view. Zack's face burned even hotter as her smoldering gaze raked over his body. He cleared his throat awkwardly. Uh, yeah, well, gotta run. Don't want to be late for xenoethics. He scurried off, the alien's sultry chuckle following him down the corridor. Zack shook his head. He'd have to get used to that kind of attention if the lurid tales about alien fascination with humans were true. Vrelik watched the human's powerful, loping stride with rapt fascination. His compact musculature, upright bipedal gait, and flush skin were utterly entrancing. She had studied humanity's unique evolutionary path in exhaustive detail, but nothing compared to witnessing their physiology in the flesh. Despite their relatively puny size, humans had not only survived, but thrived on a death world of nightmarish extremes. From searing deserts to frozen tundras, venomous minefields of flora and fauna to atmospheric maelstroms, their ancestral planet seemed specifically engineered to exterminate all life. Yet humans had clawed their way to the apex through a volatile combination of ingenuity, determination, and sheer viciousness when required. Vrilek shivered in anticipation at the prospect of unraveling their mysteries firsthand at the prestigious academy. She was one of a handful selected to mentor the first human exchange students after the Confederacy's first official contact with their species. The mere thought of learning from them, of basking in their primal vitality and intensity, was enough to make her scales flush hot. Zack slid into his seat just as the lecturer dimmed the lights, grateful he hadn't drawn too much attention. He was still getting used to being one of the first humans allowed to study off-world after first contact. The Karath Academy's prestige and influence meant he'd be under a microscope, every move scrutinized by aliens desperate to understand his strange species. He stole a sidelong glance at the shimmering, serpentine alien who had been ogling him earlier. 
She was leaning forward intently, the bioluminescent patterns rippling across her scales, casting an ethereal glow. Zack swallowed hard, trying not to stare too openly. He'd read all about the notorious human chasers, aliens from highly civilized, low birth rate species who became obsessed with humanity's primal fecundity and vigor. From what he'd heard, they could get pretty aggressive in their pursuit. Zack made a mental note to keep his distance from this one, no matter how striking her alien beauty. He had enough on his plate just trying to keep up with the Academy's grueling curriculum without dealing with horny space babes. The lights dimmed further as the lecturer, a wizened old Atharach, cleared his throat and launched into the day's topic, the ethics of interspecies relations. Zack grimaced, already sensing this was going to be uncomfortable. Over the next few weeks, Verilek found herself utterly enthralled by the human students. She devoured every nuance of their behavior, every ripple of their corded musculature and flush of their ruddy skin. Even their scent was intoxicating, a rich, musky amalgam of exertion, hormones, and the tang of alien pheromones. The more she observed them, the more Verilek's curiosity burned like a raging wildfire. These humans had not only mastered the hellish death world that spawned them, they had transcended it through sheer indomitable force of will. They had clawed their way up from the slimy primordial ooze to stand united and defiant before the galaxy, daring any to challenge their ascendancy. In her studies, she had learned of humanity's unique evolutionary pressure cooker, the relentless multi-fronted onslaught of environmental extremes, hyper-aggressive megafauna, and hostile flora that seemed to conspire to annihilate them at every turn. Most species would have been ground into extinction by such unrelenting hardship. But humans did not merely endure, they metabolized that existential adversity, channeling it into an indomitable spirit and ferocious refusal to surrender. They had become conquerors of the death world, harnessing their primal intensity and ingenuity to not only survive, but dominate their hostile homeworld like no species before them. Vrilek found herself utterly captivated by this heady cocktail of human intensity, ingenuity, and sheer bloody-minded refusal to be extinguished. She spent her nights poring over their history and culture, each new revelation stoking her smoldering fascination further. Their art was primal, visceral, and often shockingly vulgar, a snarling rebuke to the staid cerebral traditions of the Confederacy. Their music channeled that same rawness, all thundering percussion and guttural melodies that seemed to reverberate in her very bones. Even their language dripped with a delicious, profane vitality, each guttural syllable and casual vulgarity, a defiant celebration of their species' exuberant fecundity. Vrilek found herself increasingly distracted during lectures, her smoldering gaze lingering shamelessly on the human students. She drank in every twitch of their corded musculature, every bead of perspiration trickling down their flushed skin. Her forked tongue flicked out hungrily, savoring the rich musk of their alien pheromones and the tangy undercurrent of aggression simmering beneath. She knew she should be focused on the material, on preparing to be a diligent mentor and cultural liaison for the exchange students. But Vrilek couldn't tear her mind from the primal allure of these humans, these death world conquerors, whose very existence seemed to mock the staid, cerebral traditions of the Confederacy. She burned to unravel their mysteries, to bask in their intoxicating intensity and let it scour away the last vestiges of her cold reptilian composure. Zack shifted uncomfortably in his seat, keenly aware of the alien student's smoldering stare. He tried his best to avoid her, but their classes and schedules seemed to align with uncanny frequency. Everywhere he turned, those emerald eyes were drinking him in with undisguised hunger. He knew all about the notorious human chasers, aliens from highly advanced, low birth rate civilizations who became obsessed with humanity's primal vigor and fecundity. Some were content to admire from a distance, but others, well, the lurid tales of their aggressive pursuit had become the stuff of legend among the first human exchange students. Zack had hoped to avoid that hassle and focus on his studies, but this shimmering, serpentine alien seemed determined to test his resolve. He could feel the weight of her ravenous stare even now, those emerald eyes mapping every contour of his body with undisguised longing. He risked a sidelong glance, immediately regretting it as her forked tongue flicked out to taste the air between them. 
Those smoldering eyes locked on his, promising delicious, unspeakable delights. If only he surrendered to her voracious curiosity. Zack swallowed hard and wrenched his gaze away, trying in vain to focus on the lecturer's droning. This was going to be a long semester. Over the next few months, Zack found himself locked in an escalating game of cat and mouse with his alien admirer. No matter where he went on the Academy's sprawling orbital campus, she always seemed to materialize nearby, drinking in his every move with undisguised rapture. At first, he tried to politely rebuff her advances, mumbling awkward apologies and beating a hasty retreat whenever she sidled too close. But the serpentine alien was utterly relentless, trailing him with undisguised hunger and seizing any opportunity to strike up conversation or press the delicious alien curves of her body against his. You are a singular marvel, Zack, she purred one day as he hurried past that forked tongue flicking out to taste his scent. Your kind's existence defies reason. To not only survive, but conquer the hellish death world that birthed you. Zack flushed, picking up his pace in a futile attempt to escape her sultry tones. Yeah, well, humans are nothing if not stubborn bastards. Her throaty chuckle followed him down the corridor, stoking an involuntary shiver. Indeed, that obstinate refusal to surrender is utterly intoxicating. He knew he should report her aggressive pursuit, but some primal part of Zack found it enthralling. To be the object of such ravenous desire, to have awoken that simmering intensity in one of the universe's most cerebral, advanced species, it stroked his ego in a way he'd never experienced. So he allowed the game to escalate, his alien admirer growing bolder and more aggressive in her pursuit. She would trail him like a shadow, that sinuous body slinking ever closer, emerald eyes drinking in his every movement with undisguised hunger. More than once he caught her scales flushing bright crimson, pupils dilating to swallow those smoldering orbs in black as she mapped every contour of his body. Sometimes she would strike up conversation, probing him about human culture, philosophy, and biology with insatiable curiosity. Zack played along, answering her queries as vaguely as possible while trying not to squirm under the weight of her ravenous stare. He could see the intensity burning behind those emerald pools, the primal fire he'd awoken that threatened to consume her cold, reptilian composure. It was only a matter of time until she abandoned all pretense and made her move. Zack had read enough tales to know how aggressive and relentless these human chasers could become once their obsession took root. He tried to prepare himself, to steal his resolve for the onslaught to come. Yet some defiant primal part of him couldn't help but burn with anticipation at the thought of surrendering to her voracious curiosity. The breaking point came during one of their weekly lab sessions. Zack was bent over an anti-grav simulation, brow furrowed in concentration as he made minute adjustments to the complex equations governing the field dynamics. He was so engrossed in his work that he didn't notice the sinuous alien slithering up behind him until her lithe body was pressed flush against his back. Your appearance is incredible, Zack, Vrelek purred in that melodious trill that never failed to send shivers down his spine. Her forked tongue flicked out, tasting the air just inches from the nape of his neck as she drank in his rich, musky scent. To not only become the apex predator of the death world, but also to evolve faster than all known forms of life in the universe, Zack tensed, trying not to squirm as her deliciously alien curves molded against him. He could feel the blistering heat of her scales through his thin shirt, the tantalizing promise of that sleek, powerful musculature coiling just beneath. It would seem that neither you nor your kind should have existed for long. It's absurd, but, she continued in a husky rasp, yours passion for life and its gifts wildly excites me. Zack opened his mouth to reply to deflect or rebuff her aggressive pursuit as he'd done so many times before. But the words died in his throat as her sinuous coils snaked around his waist with surprising strength, the tip of her wickedly spiked tail slithering up to prod him firmly in the rear. Gah! Zack yelped, nearly jumping out of his skin at the unexpected jab. He twisted in Verlek's iron grip, fixing her with an incredulous glare. What the hell was that for? She regarded him with an expression of pure, reptilian innocence that would have been more convincing if not for the wicked glint in those smoldering emerald eyes. My sincere apologies. 
she trilled in a tone that sounded anything but apologetic. I was merely attempting to get your attention as you seemed quite engrossed in your work. Zack opened his mouth for a blistering retort, but she deftly cut him off with a sultry smile. And I simply had to share my latest breakthrough on the physiological similarities between our species. You see, I've discovered that we both possess remarkably sensitive nerve clusters in our posterior regions. With a sinuous flex of her coils, the spiked tip of her tail jabbed him again in that same sensitive area. Zack sucked in a sharp breath through gritted teeth, his face flushing red hot. Son of a... Cut that out! Verlick's smile took on a distinctly predatory edge as she drank in his flustered reaction. My apologies. I didn't mean to... Prick your interest. The blatant innuendo finally snapped Zack out of his stupor. He tried to squirm free from her iron embrace, but those sleek, powerful coils held him fast. Okay, that's it, he growled. I don't know what kind of sick game you're playing here, but I'm putting a stop to... His words choked off in a strangled gasp as the door to the lab hissed open and a gruff voice barked out. Ah, there you are, Cadet Zack. I was beginning to think you'd gotten lost in the bowels of the station. Zack's eyes went wide as the hulking form of Gunnery Sergeant Vrock filled the doorway. His craggy features twisted into a sadistic grin. The elite Kravak drill instructor was renowned as one of the most brutal disciplinarians in the entire Confederacy military. A towering slab of muscle and scar tissue who seemed to take perverse delight in tormenting the fresh-faced cadets under his charge. I, I was just, um, working on a simulation, Gunny, Zack stammered, trying in vain to extricate himself from Vrelek's grip. This is, a uh, Cadet Vrelek. She was assisting me. Vrock's beady eyes flicked over to the lithe alien currently wrapped around Zack like a scaly boa constrictor. A cruel smile split his craggy features, revealing a maw filled with dagger-like fangs. I'll just bet she was, Runt, giving you some private tutoring, eh? He let out a raspy chuckle. <laughs> you sly little bastard. Zack felt his face burning even hotter if that was possible. No, Gunny, it's not like that at all. We were just... Save it, Runt. Vrock cut him off with a dismissive wave of his massive hand. I don't give a frozen fuck what sort of extracurricular activities you feeble pricks get up to on your own time. His beady eyes glittered with sadistic glee as he jerked a thumb over his shoulder. But you're late for combat training, so pick up your junk and shake a leg before I decide to make you my new favorite target dummy. Zack gulped audibly at the threat, finally managing to wriggle free of Vrelek's coils. He shot her a murderous glare as he hurried to gather his things. This isn't over, he hissed under his breath. Not by a long shot. Vrelek merely favored him with a sultry wink before slithering off, her throaty chuckle following him out into the corridor. As he hustled to keep up with Vrock's punishing pace, Zack couldn't help but seethe over the alien's antics. He'd thought her relentless flirtations and innuendo were just some twisted game she was playing. But that little stunt in the lab proved she was a whole new level of brazen, jabbing him repeatedly with that wickedly spiked tail. Letting the most sadistic instructor on the entire station catch them like that and just smirking at the implications? It was like she got off on humiliating him or something. Well, two could play at that game. Zack's mind raced as he formulated a plan for some deliciously petty payback. If that overgrown snake wanted to push him, she was going to get one hell of a shove right back. The combat sims turned out to be a brutal gauntlet of pain, sweat, and creatively harsh insults from Brock. By the time the session mercifully ended, Zack was battered, bruised, and fairly vibrating with pent-up aggression. Perfect, he thought with a feral grin. Time to put his plan into motion. He caught up with Vrilek later that evening in one of the Academy's massive arboretum chambers. The sinuous alien was slithering through the lush alien foliage, her bioluminescent scales casting an ethereal glow over the verdant growth. Well, well, Zack called out in a low taunting tone. If it isn't Miss Private Tutor herself, Vrilek whirled toward him, eyes widening in surprise before narrowing to smoldering emerald slits. Ah, Zack, I was wondering when you'd come slithering back for your next lesson. Zack felt a rush of dark satisfaction at the slight edge of wariness in her tone. Good. At least she realized she'd finally pushed him too far. No more lessons, he growled 
advancing on her with slow, deliberate strides. I'm done playing your twisted little game. To her credit, Vrilek held her ground as he loomed over her. That sleek, sinuous body coiled and quivering like a sprung trap. Up close, Zack could make out the faint scent of her. A heady, musky aroma that made his head swim and other parts of his anatomy stir treacherously to life. Is that so? She purred, tongue flicking out to taste his scent. Her eyes widened a fraction, nostrils flaring at whatever she detected. And what twisted game did you have in mind instead? Zack opened his mouth to retort, some suitably biting comeback on the tip of his tongue. But the words died in his throat as a deafening boom shook the entire arboretum, nearly knocking him from his feet. He had a split second's glimpse of flames blooming amidst the foliage before a thunderous roar drowned out all other sound. A massive reptilian head as large as a shuttlecraft erupted from the burning undergrowth, scales smoldering and fanged maw gaping in a feral roar of rage. Zack's blood turned to ice in his veins as he took in the gargantuan, nightmarish form. All sinewy muscle, razor-edged spines and claws that could flay a man in seconds. Drakshar! Frilek hissed, her emerald eyes going wide with primal terror. But how? The behemoth swung its gargantuan head toward them with another ear-splitting bellow, jaws wide enough to swallow them both in a single gulp. Zack was already whirling to run, every shred of his combat training fleeing in the face of this primordial horror. Only Vrelek's lightning-fast coil snatching him back and flinging him aside saved him from being incinerated by the Drakshar's molten plasma breath. The Arboretum erupted in a searing conflagration, alien foliage withering to ash in a heartbeat as the beast lumbered forward on its massively taloned limbs. The deafening roar of the Drakshar shook them both to the core. Freylek didn't hesitate for an instant. Get to cover, quickly! She screamed at Zack, her sinuous body already blurring into motion as she launched herself towards a nearby alcove. Zack had other ideas. He wasn't about to abandon Vrilek to face this primordial nightmare alone. Gritting his teeth, he charged straight at the towering reptilian monstrosity, ducking and weaving through the cyclone of fire and shrapnel. The Drakshar swung its gargantuan head towards him, scales smoldering and fanged maw gaping wide enough to swallow him whole. Vrylek let out a feral shriek. The massive talon limb caught Zack square in the chest, the devastating force stealing his breath away and flinging him backwards in an uncontrolled tumble. He slammed into the bulkhead with a bone-shattering impact, the last vestiges of air exploding from his lungs in a violent rush. As he crumpled to the deck, fighting in vain to suck in a breath through his bruised lungs, Vrylek was by his side in an instant. Her powerful coils lashed out, snatching his battered body and dragging him towards the relative safety of a nearby alcove. Zack's fading consciousness registered her terrified emerald eyes locked on his, blazing with desperation and primal fear. Vrilek cradled him protectively in her sinuous embrace, her gaze frantically scanning back towards the titanic struggle between the Drakshar and the station's defenses. He could see the muscles of her lithe form tense, coiling like an enormous spring, as she prepared to fling them both to safety at the first opportunity. But her eyes kept flicking back to him, wide with panic at his fading condition. A guttural hiss escaped her fanged maw as she clutched him closer, emerald eyes squeezing shut as if in fervent prayer. Zack could only imagine she was begging any deities that would listen to send help before it was too late. His vision was going black around the edges, the sounds of the cataclysmic battle fading into a dull roar. Zack fought against the creeping oblivion with everything he had, clinging to Vrelek's desperate visage like a lifeline. The galaxy had no idea what was coming, but he was nearly certain it was going to hurt like hell.